The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to take a look at a very different boat from a company known for doing things a little bit differently. It's the Barracuda 9 from Beneteau, and I'm going to take it on a full test and performance review. She's designed to combine fishing and cruising with a unique cabin arrangement and a twin-engine outboard configuration. But first, let's take a look at her out of the water, because in addition to her enclosed pilot house, one of her other distinguishing features is the air step hull. Looking at her head on, we can see multiple lifting strakes leading to a hard reverse chime. Now, air step works quite differently from a conventional stepped hull that draws air in from the sides. Air step brings air in from above the hull, in this case through the intakes on the cabin sides, and then directs it under the hull from the center through these dual two inch ducts, and then delivers it through the low drag running surface. Our tests of boats with the air step hull have shown a marked improvement in both handling and fuel consumption. At the stern, the engine well begins 8 inches up from the keel and extends out 6 and a quarter inches. Optional trim tabs and a bow thruster were installed on our test boat. Now let's take a look at some of the operational features. Now I noticed that the engines can't tilt all the way up because they're in such close proximity to the transom, but Beneteau has come up with a workaround for that. The cockpit deck is all hardwood and channels underneath direct water to two 3-inch cockpit drains that lead directly overboard. We also begin to see features that are typical of much larger boats, starting with the most important, the enclosed pilot house. Then these hardwood cap rails with hawse holes leading to the cleats under the bulwarks. Space on the side decks measures 14 and a half inches being reduced to 9 inches with the ladder for the optional flying bridge. As we make our way to the bow, there are conventional grab handles on the sides of the cabin as well as mounted to the cap rails. Notice how the foredeck is elevated so that you're not having to bend over to work the ground tackle. This is another feature we usually see on much larger yachts. At the bow, there are two deep compartments to both sides of, again, the hardwood inlay with a standard windlass. To the starboard side is the remote control for the windlass, and both compartments are self-draining overboard. Now here's a feature you don't see very often. These forward steps with wood inlays make it convenient when you bring your boat bow first into a slip. Now you can step up and disembark. Taking a look at the helm, with huge wraparound windows and narrow mullions, visibility is certainly a non-issue on the Barracuda 9. The beginning of our test day was rainy, however, and that showed me that I'd like to see a little more coverage from the windshield wipers. Trim tab controls were just beneath the Yamaha multifunction gauges and ahead of the digital engine controls. Notice the fiberglass helm console, gunmetal gray, no glare, and it doesn't reflect in the windshield, and all the electronics are angled nicely towards the operator. The upper helm has the same gray panel as the lower helm, offering a significant reduction in glare. It's also equipped with the same Yamaha digital multifunction gauges and digital engine controls. A panel to the side of the helm, 9 inches by 12 inches, will accommodate a 12 inch diagonal screen. The flybridge helm doesn't lend itself well to operating while in the standing position. With that said, operating from the seated position was very comfortable with everything falling right into place. Now let's get underway and see how this Barracuda 9 performs. Our Barracuda 9 had a length overall of 28 feet 10 inches, a beam of 9 feet 9 inches, and a draft of 2 feet 7 inches. With an empty weight of 7,053 pounds, 3 quarters fuel, and 5 people on board, we had a test weight of 9,691 pounds. With a pair of 225 horsepower Yamaha 4 strokes turning 19 by 15 and a quarter 3 bladed propellers, we reached a top speed at 5,200 RPM and 47.9 miles per hour. That gave us a fuel burn of 44.15 gallons per hour for a range of 103 miles. But with the heavy chop during our tests, I believe that in better sea conditions that I could have broken 50 miles per hour. Not very sensitive to trim adjustments, so once you get up on plane, don't be shy about adding trim. You'll feel a boost in speed, but you won't notice much difference in the attitude of the boat. Best cruise came in at 3500 RPM and 30.1 miles per hour. That reduced the fuel burn to 17.55 gallons per hour, which the Barracuda 9 could keep up for 5 hours and 24 minutes and 163 miles while still maintaining a 10% reserve. The air step hull gave us quick times to plane with 3.6 seconds average. We accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 5.4 seconds, 30 in 8.4 seconds, and continued accelerating through 40 miles per hour in 12.6 seconds. When accelerating, very little bow rise, only about 5-10 degrees. For the most part, she seems to come up level when she gets up on plane, and that's thanks to the air step hull. With this heavy chop on test day, the Barracuda 9 seemed to handle it quite well. I can't believe how smoothly she takes the following sea. We're just slicing right through these waves, and it's a nice, gentle motion, and it really feels comfortable. 
You can see as we're crossing the wake of the camera boat how she seems to slice cleanly through the waves rather than oppose them and throw spray everywhere. She has a comfortable 15 degree roll into the turn and doesn't seem to bleed off a lot of speed in the turns. I also noticed that she makes very tight turns without ventilating the propellers. She has a sweeping shear line while maintaining high freeboard, giving her safety in offshore conditions. Although the engines are mounted very close together, I found her to have excellent low speed maneuverability. Opening side doors to both port and starboard add a lot of ventilation to the cabin area, and it also makes it very easy to tie the Barracuda 9 up single handed. In my opinion, the addition of the pilot house adds several advantages to the Barracuda 9. One being you can get out and fish earlier in the season. Another is it affords protection from the elements. And lastly, you can run later in the season. Add that to her comfortable layout and handling and the Barracuda 9 makes a capable offshore fishing platform. Well, that's our full test and performance review of the Barracuda 9 from Beneteau. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.